The big question, though, have those stocks gotten ahead of themselves after the tech sector's rally to start the year? Let's ask the dean of valuation, Aswath DeModeran, NYU Stern School of Business. Good to talk to you uh, at a perfect time to do such. Uh, these stocks too expensive or not? I think at, at this point in the market, they're, they're relative to the rest of the market. I don't see them expensive. And I think um, if you look at what's happened this year, it's really the large tech, money-making tech that's, been, that's rescued the market. I mean, collectively, money-making tech, the largest tech companies, you know, have added $1.7 trillion in market cap just in this year. Without them, the market would be in trouble. And I think they can sustain the market because there are two things that are happening. One is people are discovering how much pricing power they have. And the other is I think a lot of these companies took 22 as an opportunity to dump all the bad stuff into their earnings. They said it's a bad year, might as well dump stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of positive surprises coming out of their earnings reports. That, that is one of the bullish cases is that they took their so-called medicine before everybody else. And that's why they're the ones who are primarily talking about the year of efficiency. Uh, sure. the, you know, the words, obviously, that Zuckerberg used at, at Meta. That's how you see it as well? I think they have a lot of slack. I mean, Meta had what, thousands of people who are doing nothing. You lay off thousands of people who do nothing, that's a direct plus for your bottom line. Most companies don't have that luxury. So I think tech companies, because of the way they've cut costs, will be able to deliver higher earnings than expected. I mean, they're big companies. You're not going to expect their revenues to grow 15%, 20% a year. That's going to be an aberration. But I think the profits can actually deliver surprises because of the cost cuts. You know, you, you raise an interesting point. Yes, they are the money-making companies, and that is why they are so attractive, right? The balance sheets, the cash, free mm -hmm. cash flow, et, et cetera. But at the same time, their revenue growth is decreasing from, from where it was. So how do I judge their valuations based on, yes, the plus of money-making, but on the negative of the revenue growth declining? And I think, you know, that, that, that's a trade-off you have to make. Revenue growth is going to be in the high single digits, in my view, for these companies. And that's what I've been saying for about a year. So I think the market price now is caught up with that 8%. At the start of last year, I think the market was ahead of itself. It was building in an expected revenue growth of 12, 15% of these companies. It wasn't going to happen. Over the course of the year, of course, the market went to the other extreme and said, these are terrible companies. We shouldn't hold them. And remember when, when Facebook dropped less than $100 per share? People were convinced that the end was near. So I think you get these wild swings. And at the moment, I think they're okay. Given you know, high, high single-digit revenue growth and sustained margins and perhaps even higher margins, I think they're okay with, at, at current prices. Are, are there some who look too nosebleedy, so to speak, to you? I mean, I, I just was recounting the P.E. for these stocks from the Amazon. beginning of the year until where they are now with our, with our prior guests. You know, whether it's Apple, which was 21, and I'll just reiterate it. We can show it again as I, as I ask you this question. 21 to 26, Microsoft 25 to 28, Amazon 51 to 74, Meta 15 to 20, which now some people suggest, well, the re-rating is over in that name. NVIDIA yeah. 34 to 59, Tesla 23 to 46. I mean, you get where obviously where I'm going with that. Does one jump out to you and you say, okay, put the brakes on. This is going a little too far. Obviously, Amazon jumps out at 74 times earnings. But let's face it, for 25 years, we've been betting against Amazon's PE and losing. So I'm not willing to go out there and say, at 74 times earnings, you're getting junk. I mean, this is a company whose earnings are understated significantly because of the way they do the, they build the business model. So it obviously stands out. I do think Meta still has upside left in it. But remember, even if they're fully repriced, that doesn't make them bad investments. At this point in the market where you're defensive, I think these companies with their pricing power are pretty solid defensive investments. They're going to be able to raise earnings even in the course of a recession. And I can't say the same about you know, many non-tech companies. So in many ways, you're paying for pricing power that these companies have.